So let's segue to, to some G Men talk. All right, we're, we're going. We're going to football now, JD. This this was the panel. This is why I brought the two of you on because I knew we could we could do both and do both very well. Giants, Broncos, Sunday kickoff, and John. I have to tell you, this year with the G Men, I have no expectations once again. But I, I'm just a little bit. I'm, I'm just nervous, man. I, I'm just not. I'm not excited about what's to come. And I'm going to start with this area first because I feel like everything else will trickle down from there. And it's an area. Let me guess, the offensive line. The offensive line. (laughs) An area of concern that has not been addressed since 2011. They have not focused on the rebuild. Now, I'm going to take you to draft night, John. And I'm watching. Okay, they trade with Chicago. Great trade. They go and pick Tony. I said, okay. Skill position, uh, he, he's he, he's nice to have. We do we definitely need those. But okay, hopefully offensive line is next. They go Olujari next in the in the in the second round. I say okay, great value, great value. Offensive line has got to be next. Then they go Robinson, the cornerback. O- Olujari's the, the the linebacker, the the uh, the the pass rusher, right? Then they they go uh, cornerback with with Robinson. I say okay, what's going on here? <laughs> and, and I'm on Twitter, and I'm like, where's the offensive line help? And I have people saying, you got to wait, wait, wait for, you know, last year's picks to pan out. They can't keep picking offensive line every year. And I'm just like, but we have no answer yet. You know, Thomas was okay last year. Had had some some rough spots, but he was okay. You, we, we have uh, Hernandez, who first year was good. Second year was, was kind of topsy turvy. The solder thing, I I didn't like when when the when the you know first got him. Things are just out of whack, and now we're looking at you know a, a, an offensive line that still needs help. What what do you make of that? All right. We'll go in the time machine here. And the one thing I'll pick a bone with what you said, CP, is that I think they've really tried to address the offensive line, right? Mm -hmm. But I want to go back in time. Justin Pugh, first round pick. Western Richburg, second round pick. Yes. Eric Flowers, first round pick. Terrible. Will Hernandez, second round pick. Um, Matt Parrott, third round pick. Yeah. Andrew Thomas, first round pick. Nate Solder, top mark, top free agent on the uh, free agent on the market. Jeff Schwartz, big free agent contract. So I think they've tried. Now, obviously, they have not succeeded yet because mm-hmm. this has been an ongoing issue since 2013, right? Mm-hmm. So I think they've tried to adjust, address the issue. And I think the bet the Giants made this offseason was, look, over the last four years or four drafts since Dave Gettleman got here, we invested a second-round pick in Will Hernandez. We used a first-round pick on Andrew Thomas. We used a third-round pick on Matt Parrott, okay? We believed in these guys when we drafted them. Mm-hmm. We believe we've developed Nick Gates to the point where he can be a – starting caliber center. And I think yeah. he's probably one of the bright spots on the offensive he's line good. right now. He's, he's named good. the captain. I think he's been pretty good. Yeah. And then they, they, they liked what they saw from Shane Lemieux last year. Mm-hmm. So they were, they said, look, we're going to go and spend our free agent dollars. We're going to improve. We're going to get that second quarterback, which everyone knew was a need. We wanted to get that tall playmaker, which everyone knew was, it was a need. Mm-hmm. So they used the money on Jackson and Galladay, two needs. Then you get to the draft. I know you listen to the stuff we do, CP. You know, mm-hmm. I was team Rashawn Slater. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. think he's a heck of a player. I think he's a really good player. But at the same time, and, you know, Paul Dettino on my co-host threw it down. He goes, John, look, I'm going to make you make this decision. Rashawn Slater's on the board. The Bears, and he was. The Bears offer you that trade. You take the trade. And I sat there for like five minutes, and I thought about it, and I would have taken the trade. Yeah. I think having that extra first-round pick yeah, next year. I like the trade. Yeah, me too. Yeah, as much yeah. as I loved, I, and I would have picked Devontae Smith if he was there too, by the way. Either mm-hmm. one of those guys. Mm-hmm. But given what you got and the value of having two first round picks next year and the extra pick later on too, I thought it was a trade you had to make. So, and once you got past that, there was never to me an obvious super valued offensive lineman on the board when they picked. I know a lot of giant fans are up in arms. How did you not pick Trey Smith? He dropped to the fifth mm-hmm. round. He's going to start for the Chiefs and. Uh, Look, they got a heart condition. I'm not Mm -hmm. a doctor. I can't judge how these medical staffs are going to pass or fail these guys. Mm -hmm. So I I can't talk about medical stuff. I just don't know the answers to that. None of us do except for the team doctors. Right. So they're placing a bet that they made the right decisions with these draft picks, that these guys are going to have enough internal improvement where they're going to come together and they're going to play well. And I think fans were somewhat willing to be optimistic. And then we had one half of that third preseason game. (laughs) And everyone lit their ha- everyone just lit their hair on fire. It was all What's over. It was like on? all that off season optimism yeah. was just gone. He just went up in flames. Poof. So 
I'm going to try to be level-headed and say, I'm not going to let a half of preseason football change my mind Mm. as to what the strategy is and whether or not it's going to work. Now, is there a guarantee that this development's going to happen is going to work? No. There's not all guys develop at the same rate. Not all guys develop at all. We've seen it with guys that the Giants have had on this roster, right? So we don't know. But I want to see more before I'm willing to, you know, hit the big red button and do the dog in the room with the fire going all around me that, you know, this is not going well. And then, and then they did, you know, they went out and got Price from the Bengals, and, and they got, uh, I think it was Barrettson from uh, from the Ravens. So it looks like they, they're trying to get, you know, some reinforcements, some depth here, just in case. But then I saw that they, they've upgraded Solder to the right tackle. And by the way, and, and, and I think that's the right move. Mm-hmm. I mean, Solder, say what you want about him. Yeah, I think at the time. I thought they had to sign a left tackle that year just because they were so desperate. Yes. They were trying to make a run. Yes, absolutely. You had to. Absolutely. You had no choice. And look, Solder never made a Pro Bowl. I hope everyone went into that eyes wide open as to what he was. And I have more faith in Nate Solder against Von Miller than I do Matt yeah, Fair. Yeah, yeah. So I do think that's probably the way they go. But I also think, CP, that you're going to see a pretty heavy rotation between those guys. I think you're going to see Pear get a few series a game, too, to be honest with you. Interesting. Interesting, and and I hope I hope Thomas really you know takes form. I, I really hope he takes. Well, form. he has to. He and has I really, to. I don't, I'm sorry for interrupting, but that no, really is the key, dude. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Fourth, fourth overall pick, he needs to be your franchise left tackle. They believe he can be the franchise left tackle. It might not happen fast enough for some Giant fans, but until that preseason game, to be honest with you, I thought he was having a pretty good summer. Mm. I thought him and Nick Gates were both pretty darn good all summer long in practice. And even in the joint practices between the, you know, with the Browns and the Patriots, you know, I thought Thomas was okay. So I'm hoping that how he plays is more reminiscent of the rest of his off season, rather than just the one half of football that we all saw. Now, when we talk about the franchise, um, the quarterback, man, m- most important piece of this thing in Daniel Jones and year, this is year three. You know, fans, you have one part of the Giants fans who are, are optimistic. They, they feel like he's next. And for me, John, you know, I got to tell you, when, when I came up watching this team, I was right at the end of Sims when I first started making sense of football. And I waited, what, three, four quarterbacks before we, before we got to Eli, before we finally had some, right? I went through the Dave Brown, the, the, the Kent Grahams, the Danny Cannells, you know. And a lot of those guys didn't, didn't get drafted as early as Jones. You know, Danny Cannell had a great career. What was he at? Florida, Florida State. Had a Florida, great, State Florida, yeah, State, Florida State. Florida State. Great State. career mm-hmm. as a college quarterback. But no, no one could, could prove that they could be the franchise. Kerry was great for us. Got us to the championship. Rebounded well from Carolina. You know, with Jones, I think you, you and Deal, you and David Deal today hit it right on the head with, with uh, your expectations. And I think it's a pocket presence, right? Because, you know, the, the fumbles that were have been an issue, the interceptions have been an issue, the overall decision making. But I think, you know, him improving his pocket presence is really something that I want to see him do this season and really extend plays when he can and just make the right reads down the field. What's your take on Jones this year? No, CP, you're right, and you're talking about I was on with David Deal on, on Big Blue Kickoff yeah. Live today. That was the conversation you're talking about. And, you look, you're right, and I think that's something that comes with experience, and I think he's done a good job of getting the ball out quicker. I do think that's something he's good at. And here's the thing about Jones, and I even underestimated this when we did our draft coverage. He's a much more physically gifted player than I think a lot of people mm. even now give him credit for. Like he can make all the throws. I can ma- I can make the argue- argument that his physical talent actually surpasses Eli. Like mm. combined athleticism wow. with arm strength, tight spiral. I can make that argument. I can make the argument. So he has all the physical traits. Can he figure out the art of playing quarterback? And mm. he's such a good athlete, but can he turn that athleticism into functional elusiveness in the pocket, right? Where he can, you know, make those off. Yeah kilter plays that Josh Allen makes that, that Herbert makes, and, you know, guys like that, Patrick Mahomes, you know, can he do those things? Can he take that next step? And I think it only happens with work and snaps. And now he has the weapons around to do it. And I think he'll have the opportunity and we'll see. And I think that's why, and, and JD, this is why I think this season is so exciting. This is kind of the culmination of everything that's happened the last four years for better or worse. We're going to find out if the way they built this was the right way. And if it's yeah. going to work or if it's not, you know, from the offensive line to the quarterback, 
to the running back, to the defense, put it all together. You know, they've committed to this roster now for the next couple of years with the way they've spent money in for agency. Mm-hmm. This is it. So this is the culmination of all that now. And that's why I can't wait for these games to start because we're finally going to start getting some answers. Yeah, I mean, I can't, <laughs> you know, I can't wait for Sundays only a few days away. So we're going to find out with, you know, with Daniel Jones. I think, you know, it, it's it's going to come down to in the long run. Uh, is, you know, you mentioned Eli. One of the things Eli caught a lot of slack, you know, a lot of slander throughout his career with the interceptions and the turnovers and this and that. But the one thing that Eli was able to do throughout his career, especially in crunch time and playoff situations, is the hurry up offense, the fourth quarter, his pocket, you know, in the pocket. You know, there were many times where he felt the pressure. He was right. up, you know, at key moments. Eli had this knack for just making big plays. Oh, Absolutely. And 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 and, and the, I think that does Jones has that. That's what I'm looking for. Is you know when it we, when it comes down to this season, will you know? I know the offensive line is going to catch all the heat, but he's also going to have to help them. And as you mentioned, Jones is actually more athletic than than mm-hmm. Eli. He's mm-hmm. faster than Eli. He might be an inch taller than Eli, and he looks to be a little bit stronger. So he has the physical tools. Does he have the awareness? Does he have the pocket? you know, present and does he have the clutch gene? We're going to find out this season, as John said, you know, they've made a big investment on a lot of these players, Saquon Barkley being one, you know, uh, a Dory Jackson, this off season, giving him that contract, Logan Ryan, like this team is set. They're set for a few years and we're going to find out, you know, what's this plan, a good plan or, and I think that's why they made that trade, too, as kind of like a security blanket. Mm. You're going to have additional draft capital next year in the event that this does not pan out the way, you know, a lot of us hope. You know, they'll be equipped to make a quick turnaround, you know, depending on how the Chicago Bears do because they own that draft pick. Yeah, and I'm, I'm hoping uh, uh, Justin Fields, you know, he, he had some bright spots in the preseason, man. I'm hoping they stick with Andy Dalton. Stick it out with the vet. <laughs> stick it out with the vet, man. We'll go to Fields later on in, in the season. But let, let's go with with, uh, with, with Dalton first. Um, and and as J.D. mentioned, Saquon, you know, this is third year. Saquon had, had the unfortunate injury last year. I was so disappointed and, and sad for him that that happened to him. But again, you know, the strength of the offensive line will dictate his success in some regard. So um, they're saying that he may play in, in week one. What are you hearing about that? And, and just what are your overall expectations for Saquon this, this year? Yeah, I'm optimistic, to be honest with you. Look, he got taken off pump a, a month ago, I think mm. almost to the day. I think it was something like August 6th or August 7th when he got taken off the pump list. So that's a long time to get ready for the year. So he's been practicing. He hasn't had a setback as far as any of us could tell. We have, I haven't seen him take contact in practice. They kind of hid that until the media wasn't allowed to watch anymore. Mm. So I, I can't comment on how he's taken it. But look, I, I think he's going to play how much he's going to play and how many touches he gets, I think, is an open question. Um, remember, they have that quick turnaround in week two against Washington, yeah. which, I, which, which, which I do think complicates things. And here's the good thing, though, CP, and I said this on, on, on today's Big Blue Kickoff Live, too. Mm. Say what you want about the offensive line. Last year with Wayne Gallman, who is, you know, an average yeah. NFL running back. Yeah. They ran for 100 yards in seven straight games and eight out of nine in the middle of that year. Mm. So this offensive line, as much as people want to criticize them for their pass protection, their run blocking was actually pretty good last yeah. year. Yeah. So yeah. I think Saquon's going to have a monster year. I've been, I've been on that for a while now. My bold prediction this year, I think he's going to surpass his rookie year in terms of yards from scrimmage. And that's, I think he had 2028 or 2032 that year in terms of his yards from scrimmage. So I think he's going to surpass that this year. I think he's in for a big year as long as he stays healthy and all the hard work he puts in. I think he will remember his last two injuries. He never has soft tissue injuries. Mm. It was a high ankle sprain. And then he had the ACL. Those things happen. You get rolled up on things happen. So I think he's going to have a big year and I think you feel good about it. And I think, that's why you hope that you don't have to be a pass heavy team so you can avoid some of maybe those issues on the offensive line that might pop up and you can lean on Barkley a little bit. And I think that's what they're going to try to do and win with their defense, which I think is going to be very strong. JD, you want to get in on the uh, Saquon topic? Yeah. I mean, I, I think he, he, yeah. Same thing as what John said. I think, 
you know, I think Saquon's going to have a very strong year. Uh, I think their the game plan will be to rely on him as much as you can and, you know, use him as a pass catcher, you know, maybe spread him out and, you know, use him in other areas, yeah. and, you know, because he's an explosive player. So you have to maximize his talent more, you know, in addition to being a runner as a receiver, um, you know, use some creative plays. They're going to rely on him a lot. We may not be able to see that until maybe week three, week four, um, just because of, you know, coming off injury you have the short week you're going to play thursday right against a tough defense too mm. so it's not only mm-hmm. that it's a sh- it's a quick turnaround you're playing a physical defense two tough Tenons defenses in a row by the way mm. denver right. and washington are both excellent mm. right and and, and and you know and it's going to be and it's a division game you know, yes yeah. division games are always tough games so you may not see the full extent of the way they're going to utilize them until week three week four yeah. But I'm expecting a big year, and this is a big year for him personally as well. You know, he, he, there was a lot of talk about did the Giants make the right move in drafting a yeah. running back that high? Yeah, and I know for him personally, he understands this is a big year for him, and I think he will respond to the to, you know to those expectations. Certainly hope so, man. It's going to, going to be a big year for him, as you said. And and John, before before we get to the defense, uh, Kadarius Tony. You know, drafted again. He was much hyped out of Florida. You know, didn't start training camp too well. He didn't have the shoes, and and then you know, unfortunately, <laughs> I, think, I think he had COVID, and he's got the hamstring. You know, I'm I'm hoping this isn't like a Jarrell Jernigan part two, man. You know, I'm hoping this kid can can do, you, you know what I mean, man? Jarrell Jernigan, what what a wow, nightmare, Jernigan. what a nightmare. Yeah, I'm, wow. I'm bringing up. I got PTSD, JD. I'm oh, telling you, man. man. I'm nervous. Dude, you do have PTSD. I'm, I'm nervous. Jeez, like, like like what's that? Is Ramsey's barring uh, you gonna you know, bring up like, to me? You know, I mean, Man. These guys are injured. Galladay's injured. Tony's injured. Ingram always injured. But but anyway, how do you see Sonoris them? Norris Moss. Yeah, Norris <laughs> Moss. You know, how, how do you see them uh, using Tony in, in this offense? So Norris Moss, by the way, one of the best practice players I've oh, ever yeah. seen. He no no one could cover that dude in practice. Wow. It was unbelievable. Oh my God. Um, I, okay, I'm I'm gonna do the flip side of this for yeah. you. You know what other wide receiver barely practiced at all in camp and missed like the first four games of his, of his rookie year? Mm. <laughs> I'd be number 13 Odell, Odell Beckham, Beckham Jr. Jr. And he yeah, turned out yeah, to be pretty good. Yeah, yeah. So, and again, I'm not saying Kadarius Tony's going to be Odell Beckham yeah. Jr. But there are ways Odell to overcome had like this sort of stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah, he had a hamstring. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 100%. Mm-hmm. So, look, Joe Judge was asked about that today, and he said, I believe he will have an impactful role, I believe was the word he used. And he said, now, I don't um, necessarily measure a major role he said he'll have a major role, and he said, I don't necessarily measure the being a major role by number of snaps. I measure it by his ability to make an impact. That's what he said. So my guess is that we're not going to see him for a ton of snaps just mm. because, look, you have Galladay, you have Shepard, you have Slayton. There's just a not a lot of room at the end right now at wide receiver, right? Mm-hmm. So I think you're going to see him in sp- on special teams as a return man in spots. Mm. I think you'll see a couple small packages for him on offense where – Maybe you run some wide receiver screens for him. You run him on some jet, you know, some jet sweep action. You know, I think at some point this year, maybe not week one, you might see a halfback option pass from him. Hmm. Run him in the backfield a little bit. That dude's got a cannon. He was a high school quarterback. So I think you have a little bit of a package for him. I wish CP, I could give you some level of insight into what he's going to bring. I literally have not seen him yeah, practice in full one since he got to the Giants. <laughs> <laughs> because of those issues knows. you've mentioned. I mean, I, mean, I watched his tape in Florida. The shoe thing was crazy, man. Dude, it's nuts. I watched his tape in Florida. It was awesome. Like, you yeah. put the ball in his hands. He's like a pinball out there making mm-hmm. people miss, running through tackles. Like, he's unbelievable, his ability with the ball in his hands. But, you know, he just hasn't been able to do much in practice. So, I think it's still a bit of a mystery, but I think they'll have a, a package for him here to try to give him the opportunity to make some some plays with the ball in his hand. A- a- interesting. Tony has man. some pressure. You know, Kadarius Tony has some pressure himself because of, you know, as John mentioned earlier, the whole Slater talk. Uh, the trade talk, and and he's had a weird off season. You know, as John said, we have no clips of him other than you know when he first I think it was mini camp. He you know you saw him going through a few drills, but you, we haven't seen with any, one shoe know, on. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. It's just been a weird off season for him. But you know, I, I think they'll have some special design plays for him here in week one. Um, depending on what that is, we'll see on Sunday, and I think they'll slowly increase his 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 snaps as the weeks come on. 
Uh, speaking of the defense, um, again, in the, I'm always a trenches guy, John. You know, just coming off of all our good teams. Some time I've been watching Giants, you build from the trenches and, and everything works out. How are we looking on pass rush? You know, Lorenzo Carter had some promise. He got hurt last year. Uh, I do like the, the the tackles. You know, Dexter Lawrence. I love that that uh, that pickup in the Odell trade. Um, where do you see? How, how do you see the pass rush looking for us uh, next season? You know, I agreed with you, and I was worried about Carter coming off the Achilles this year. But then a week ago, you know, Patrick Graham was asked about Lorenzo Carter. And he gave, that's the Giants defensive coordinator, mm-hmm. he gave this like long two-minute soliloquy about how great he's come back. Even with the injury, he looks like a completely different player than he looked like last year. Um, he mentioned um, Chandler um, from his days in New England, mm-hmm. and now he's with Arizona. Mm-hmm. He get, he's not comparing him to his players, but he says, look, you feel him out there like like mm-hmm. like you do with Chandler Jones. Chandler Jones, so, yeah. So, yeah. So, I think... I'm more optimistic about what Lorenzo Carter can bring. It's his fourth year. I think if it's going to happen, it's going to happen now. And then you hope, you know, the other side, you split some time between Ojalar, you split some time between O'Shane Zimenez, you get a couple sacks from there. But I think you're looking at Carter on one side. You hope Leonard Williams can, you know, I don't know if he's going to get you. I don't think he's getting you double digits again. It's just really hard. I went back in the last five years, only one defensive tackle has had back-to-back years with double-digit sacks, and his name's Aaron Donald, and nobody's mm-hmm. Aaron Donald. So that's going to be a real tough go for him to get to double digits. But if he gives you seven or eight, that's a heck of a year. Mm-hmm. I think you're happy. And then I think with the – and, you know, you talk about building with the trenches. The Giants have built from the secondary, right? Yeah. Bradbury, Jackson, Peppers, Draft McKinney, sign Logan Ryan. Logan I mean, those Ryan. are five yeah. defensive yeah. backs that are big investments, right? Mm-hmm. So – you can cover a lot man to man and you can make up for your lack of outside pass rushers that can consistently win one on one by blitzing a lot more. Mm-hmm. So I think you're going to see a lot more pressure. I think Peppers is going to be used as a blitzer a lot. And I think you're going to have a bunch of guys with three to five sacks rather than two guys with double digits. And that's yeah. how they're going to try to work the pass rush. M- mix it around. How, how's my guy, uh, Blake Martinez, been looking this year, man? That, that he, was, he was a beast in, 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 the, in the linebacker core last year, man. Tackle dude, machine. I love Blake. He's yeah. a great dude, Big too, time. man. Uh, he's just, he's tremendous. And he's, he's just so solid. He calls the defense. He organizes everybody. He's smart. He never misses a tackle. He's really good at zone defense, which is what they played most of the time last year. I'm curious to see it to play more man this year, how he's going to handle that. Mm-hmm. But he's really good in the run game. You plug him, you play him, you don't worry about him. And I think it's probably the Giants' best middle linebacker since Antonio Pierce. Yep. And I don't think it's close, to be so honest. So that play he made, he made, John, in preseason? <laughs> <laughs> That it's play true. he made in preseason, that interception was, was amazing. Yeah. yeah, one hand, yeah. Yeah. you know, carrying yeah. Johnu Smith down the seam, it's pretty good. I'm telling you, you hit it on the money, man. He reminds me of Pierce so much, and, and definitely glad to have him. I love Bradbury in the secondary as well. Um, so we, we got the Broncos coming into town, two and a half point road favorites. How do you see this thing playing out? Look, if you like old school Giants football, you're going to enjoy Sunday because this is going to be, I think, a grinded out, ugly, low scoring game. Mm-hmm. I think both these defenses at the end of the year will be top 10 defenses. The Broncos, they're really good up front. Bradley Chubb and Von Miller will be an early yeah. challenge for the offensive tackles. They have a completely revamped secondary. They bring back their two safeties, Justin Simmons and Kareem Jackson, who are both very good players. Simmons, mm-hmm. one of the best safeties in the league. Then they add Kyle Fuller from the Bears, who's really good. Yeah. They bring That's back good. Callahan, who's a good player. And mm-hmm. they sign um, Ronald Darby, who's a solid NFL corner. And then mm-hmm. they drafted Patrick Sertan, the second yeah, in the yeah, first yeah. round, Patrick right? Patrick Sertan. So, wow, we're getting old, man. We got dude, another Patrick Sertan in the league. <laughs> dude, it, it's crazy. Trust yeah. me. I, I never feel older than I see. Dude, Joe Judge is two months younger than me. <laughs> I feel like an old freaking man. It, 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 it's no good. But, look, they have a really good secondary. Like, mm. the Broncos could have a top five defense this year. So, look, this might sound cliche. The team that wins this game is going to be the team that either makes that one big play on offense, maybe a big Saquon Barkley run, the Broncos run defense is not the best, and the Giants defense is good as preventing big plays, or the team that loses is going to be the team that throws that pick six, that fumbles, and the ball gets returned for a touchdown or gives up a special team score, right? It's going to be that one big play that swings this game, good or bad, that I think is going to decide things. You know, 
and I'll just say this about Denver because I think a lot of Giant fans are sleeping on them. If they had a Pro Bowl level quarterback, they would be in the Super Bowl conversation. Mm, mm. That's how good their roster wow. is. I talked about all their guys on defense. Guys, on offense, look at Cortland Sutton, yeah. Jerry Judy, Noah Fant, Tim Patrick, KJ Hamler, Melvin Gordon. Yeah. And Gordon, Gordon Javante had a good Williams. year last year. He had a pretty good yeah, year. Yeah, Melvin Gordon was great last year. Yeah, and I think yeah. Javante Williams was the best running back in the draft. That mm. dude has like Marshawn Lynch like vibes going on. He's wow. a hell of a player. So, and they have a good offensive line. So if Teddy Bridgewater can give him anything here, I think the Broncos can be a really, really good team. So they're good. They're a very, very solid football team. So I think it'll be a close game. It'll be a field goal game. And whichever team, again, makes that one big player, one big mistake, that's going to kind of determine how this goes. And if the Giants want to win, guys, last year the Broncos were bottom five, bottom six in the league in run defense in most major categories. Run it well on first. I know. And trust me, I'm a passing on first down guy. I want to be aggressive. But in this game, no, 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 no. Run the ball. Don't let the Broncos pass rushers on third and long pin yeah, their ears yeah. back and, and rush the quarterback. Run the ball on them, whether it's Booker or Saquon, however this goes, that's how you're going to win this game if you're the Giants. Let your defense win it. Don't turn it over. Protect your quarterback. Win a nip and tuck game and get your season off to a good start. Because, guys, the last thing the Giants see, and I'll close on this and then I'll shut up. Every year since 2013, except for one. Yep. The Giants have started 0-2. Yep. 0 the only 2, year man. they did not start 0-2 was the one year since 2013 they've made the playoffs in 2016. It is imperative that they get off to at least a 1-1 one one start this year. Yeah. So why not do it in week one so you're not heading into Washington in week two thinking it's Armageddon trying to win in a short week against a division yeah. opponent. I'll leave it at that. Well, well, well said, man. Well said. We got to get off to a better start, man. Because yeah, you know, it's it's always like after the second game. Now you're figuring out, okay, well, if we beat this team, beat this team, now we can get a wild card, and, and you're already <laughs> predicting doomsday scenarios early, JD. So, uh, JD, g- give me a score prediction and and your, your thoughts on the game. Well, my uh, my thoughts on the game is, you know, John mentioned a lot of what what's most likely going to happen in the way that they're going to attack the Denver Bronco defense. It's certainly a talent defense. And, you know, as John mentioned, you know, the the Giants defense have a big test to start out in first, in the first game, you know, they have a talented, you know, when John was mentioning Sutton and, and Judy and Tim Patrick, no fan, he mentioned a lot of first round picks there with fans and and Jerry Judy, you know, Melvin Gordon is a first round pick. Mm -hmm. They have some a one talent on that roster. So, Yes, Bridgewater is not Aaron Rodgers. He's not Patrick yeah. Mahomes. But in these tight games, one little, you know, busted coverage, one little missed assignment, and you have a 40-yard play, you have a touchdown, that could be the difference in the game. Mm-hmm. So the Giants defense needs to be disciplined, and they need to, you know, execute the game plan. As far as offensively, I think first down is going to be important for them in terms of getting positive play so that you don't become predictable in second and third downs. You know, that first down, they have to get positive play, get Danny Jones in comfortable yardage play, second and six, second and five, you know, at least second and seven. You don't want to get into negative yardage on first down. And now, you know, you're allowing a defense to set against you and better game plan and execute their game plan. Uh, As far as the game, I think if you do pass the ball, Listen, it's hard with this secondary, but if you if I had to pick one guy that I would challenge the most would be Ronald Darby out of their corners. That would be a guy that I would challenge the most if I had to pick. I would look at getting, you know, Kenny Galladay to his side, um, getting, you know, maybe even a package with Kadarius Tony, try to test him with some speed. That would be the one position. You know, when teams play the Giants, they're gonna look at that secondary and they're gonna do the same thing. They're gonna say, Okay, this giant secondary is very good. What is the one position we're going to attack? And as I mentioned to you, CP, if Adoria Jackson, Adoree Jackson lives up to his billing, the, that giant slot corner position slot. is going to get attacked a lot, mm-hmm. you know, and teams are Absolutely. probably going to look at maybe Blake Martinez or Jabril Peppers in terms of, you know, you just try to get your best matchups. And if you're an offense, you're looking at probably those three players, Blake Martinez, get him on space, Jabril Peppers, try to test Darnay Holmes. Um, so as if I'm the Giants, I'm looking at Ronald Darby. Giant fans, keep in mind on that matchup. You may hear that name a lot on Sunday when the Giants pass the ball. They may be targeting that position. Final score, I have the Giants 23, 
and I'm going to give the Broncos 16. I think the Giants defense holds up 23 to 16. New York football Giants. Nice. And by the way, you go back on you CP real quick. You go back yeah. on Ronald Darby. Very susceptible to double moves. So if you can mm. get Jones a little bit of time and run like Slayton on a double move with that speed or something, that's how you could get him. Well, well said, fellas. And John, what, what's your score prediction, man? I can't let you go without the score prediction. I don't do predictions, man. I'm, <laughs> I'm calling the game. I don't do predictions. Uh, right, I how about tough. this? Yeah. I, I, I will give you a score. I'm not going to tell you know what? Not hell with it. I'll do it. All right. How about let's say um, <laughs> Giants 13, Broncos 9. Okay. All right. All right. I'm going 17 14. G Men season opener. Get off to the right start. And then uh, and then go take the division away from the Washington football team. Let's do it. Saquon Barkley, they... forty yard touchdown will be the only touchdown scored in the game. How Let's do it. I, I was gonna say, based on your you guys' score predictions, I, I guess if they do score twenty three, it's a major accomplishment. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I, I I'm gonna go a little bit conservative, JD. You know, we will, we got to figure out Tony's shoe situation. We got to make sure Galladay's healthy. <laughs> Jones is back, right? It, it's too many too many question marks for me right now. So I'm keeping the score low, and low scoring game seventeen fourteen. G men with the W man. <laughs>